The parable is a story of life in crisis. The steward has hit the bumpers of life. He realizes that his life is about to unfold. And just like the prodigal son, the cause of his downfall is the mismanagement of resources, the squandering of resources which were never his in the first place. And the steward responds with intelligence and cunning. And it seems that that's what the master commends him for. He takes one debt, a debt of financial uh, substance, and converts it into a debt of gratitude. He takes something which is owed physically and turns it into a debt of gratitude to him personally, which will need to be repaid in due course. But precisely what he does is morally ambiguous. Is it an intensification of dishonesty? Does he give away something which is rightly owed to his master? Or does he sacrifice some of his own cut? Does he sacrifice some of the interest that he as the broker or middleman in the deal would rightfully be owed? Well, the text is intentionally unclear, though I have to say the, the figures that are involved suggest dishonesty to me. But precisely because the text is unclear, it doesn't seem that that's what the gospel writer wants us to focus on. What is being praised here is not what he does, but that he does something that he sees the writing on the wall, that he sees that the judgment is coming and that unless he acts, his life will fall apart. And so in an important way, the dishonest steward is different from the prodigal son. Whereas the prodigal son really hits rock bottom, the dishonest steward is acting now to prevent himself from hitting that lowest point of having to dig or beg. And that's precisely where the comparison with the sons of light is helpful. Jesus is using this parable to show that the men of this age and the dishonest steward are able to see the judgment of the world which is approaching them. They're able to act with cunning and intelligence because they know that their life is unraveling. Whereas the men of spirit, the men of light, are the ones who fail to see that in Christ is the definitive crisis of their life the definitive moment when God will intervene in the world to bring them to account for the way in which they have handled the resources, the privileges that are entrusted to them. What Jesus praises in the dishonest steward is responsiveness to the crisis at hand. What he encourages us as his disciples is to live not primarily in the face of the crises of this world, but to live our life in face of the moment of judgment, to know that God has already begun that initiative on our behalf, that Christ has already come for us, and that the moment is coming when we too will be summoned to give an account of our doings, to give an account of our stewardship of the resources entrusted to us. And as we celebrate a Memorial Day of our Dominican martyrs in Spain, this parable can help us to understand the sometimes remote stories of the martyrs. Sometimes we find ourselves wondering, would I have the courage of a martyr? Would I be able to hold fast to the faith in the face of one of life's ultimate crises. It's only if here and now, in the small crises of our life, we have developed the habit of seeing all of the troubles of this world from the perspective of that ultimate crisis when God will summon us to judgment in Christ. Only if we have inserted our life with all of its troubles into the cross of Jesus Christ, 
Only if in the small things we practice dying for Christ and rising to life will we find on a day when the ultimate sacrifice is asked of us that we are ready, that we are habituated for action, that we fear not the Lord summoning us and asking us what we have done. For with Christ we have died, and with him we shall rise again.